Welcome back. Now I'm going to do a demo. This is an actual experiment that we, we perform in our classes. Uh, it's called Joule Heating, where I'm going to connect the power supply to an uh, inner cup of a calorimeter. Right? So then the positive goes to one side and then from the other side I connect it to an ammeter because I want to measure the current in the circuit. And then I connect over here, I connect the voltmeter to measure the voltage uh, across the resistor. And then there's a coil here. And so when the current goes through the coil, the coil heats up and the coil will be immersed in a cup of water. I've already measured the inner cup of the calorimeter. The measure of the inner cup of the calorimeter is 42.5 grams. I already put the water in there and I measured its uh, mass 174.0 grams. So then I'm gonna show you what the initial temperature is. We'll measure that. And then when we connect everything, I'll keep it there probably 10 minutes or 15 minutes and I'll let the thing heat up. So uh, what I'm trying to prove from this equation is that the uh, power given off by uh, uh, voltage source power is equal to voltage times the current. So if I average out my voltage and current readings over a span of time, and then uh, I average that out, voltage and current, and I, uh, since power is equal to energy divided by time, right, so then uh, the energy given off is equal to voltage, average voltage times average current times time. So that's the energy given off by the, the coils, right? And then that, if there's no heat escaping, that heat given off by the coils, right? We can show that by the red color. That heat, heat given off by the coils should go into warming up the water and the cup, right? So the, I'm trying to show that the energy that is given off by the uh, coils is approximately equal to the energy that goes into heating the water and the cup. So the energy that goes into heating the water in the cup is equal to the mass of the water times specific heat of the water times the change in temperature of the water plus the mass of the cup times the specific heat of the cup times the change in temperature of the cup. So then we'll compare these two energies. This is the energy given off by the, um, the coils and this is the heat that goes into heating up the water. And then we'll see which one is larger and we could give explanations for that. Okay, so I've got the connections all made here. This is the power supply. I'm going to put the power supply at uh, 10 volts when I start connecting it. Then I've got the water here. I've got the thermometer in the water. And then the original temperature is 23.6 Celsius. Right, so that's the initial temperature. And then from the power supply, I have this wire going uh, all the way to, it goes to here, right, from the connection. And you can see here that the, there's a coil here connected to it, right? From the other side, from the white wire, you can see I go all the way to here, the positive. And then where is this connected? It's connected to here. This is the 10 amp fuse of the ammeter, right? So I'm using the 10 amp fuse in case the, uh, the current that I get is larger than the maximum. This is the milliamp fuse. It can only take 400 milliamps. So I'm using the unfused 10 amps and it can take a lot of current. And then this is gonna show me the current. And then from the negative of the, uh, ohm, uh, from the negative of the ammeter, I go all the way and I go connect it. Um, and I close the circuit right here. So it becomes a complete circuit. So ammeters, you always put them in series to the circuit. And that means they're an essential part of the circuit, right? Then I have here the voltmeter, and this is going to help measure voltage. See, I'm connected it to the common and volts. And then from the common, this black wire, I go all the way to one side of the coil. So I measure the voltage across the coil. And then from the other side, the red one goes all the way down here. And then it goes all the way here and it goes to the other side. So I'm measuring the voltage across the coil. Okay, once we are ready to commence, then I'm gonna measure the initial temperature, 23.8 Celsius. I put the thermometer through the hole here and then I'm gonna use this to steer the water up and down, right? And then I'm gonna start my uh, timer right here so that I can uh, heat it for about 10, 15 minutes. So let's turn the uh, power supply on, start the timer. 
and then look monitor the temperature the temperature should start going up 23.8 is the initial temperature okay so then this is the amps I have here 1.965 amps so it's hovering around there 1.966 1.967 and then my volts is 9.08 volts and then as you can see the temperature has gone up now 23.9 and I'm at the one minute mark so then I'll come back to the video in about 10 15 minutes and we'll see what the temperature is okay Okay, you can see now I've been heating the system for 18 and a half minutes. I'm going to wait a minute and a half till it's 20. The voltage now is 9.16, the current 1.984, and the temperature has risen all the way to 57.8. So it's really getting hot, the water. This is basically how we um, warm up water for coffee too. A lot of the electric coffee heaters or um, any other kind of electric heater that heats up water quickly uh, we it basically is made up of a coil in there and there's current and voltage that runs through it and it heats up the water very very quickly it's a very efficient way of heating up the water okay so we're about done I'm gonna stop the stopwatch record my final voltage 9.1 9.12 volts or 9.13 volts okay let's say 9.12 1.973 1.97, 1.970, and then uh, let's monitor the highest temperature that it reaches. I've not turned it off, so it keeps going up because there's a little bit of a lag of time where the water still keeps warming up due to the heat that uh, is given off by the resistor. So you wait until it reaches the final highest temperature, even after you turn it off. Okay. So 61.7 and at some point it's going to start going back down 61.8 this is the same reason why um, even though the longest day of the year is june 21 but the hottest month is not in june it is in july or maybe august there's a bit of lag of time where the temperature keeps warming up the temperature of the earth keeps warming up even though june 21st is the longest day of the year so you wait, 62.1, 62.2, still keeps going up. So it's pretty much plateaued at 62.3 for a long time. Now it's going back down, it's cooling down, 62.2, 62.1. So we're gonna record the final temperature as 62.3. And now let's do all the calculations. So now I have the final temperature, 62.3. I recorded the initial current, the final, the initial voltage, the final current, the final voltage. And I what I decided to do is just take the initial values and the final values and then average the two instead of recording every minute or so. This is the quickest, easier way. And then I'll do all the calculations and see what we get. So the energy given off by the coils is the average voltage times the average current times the time. So the average voltage is going to be the, the average of these two, which is going to be 9.10 volts, 9.10 volts. And the current is going to be the average of these, so it's going to be 1.68, 1.968, right? Since this is 965, there's a 0 .06, 0 0.006 difference between them. So 1.968 is going to be the average current. And then the time is going to be 20 minutes, right? And then each minute is 60 seconds. So this is going to be the energy given off by the, um, by the power supply. 21.49 times 10 to the third, so it'll be kilojoules. 21.49 kilojoules. Now let's see which one is bigger, the energy given off by the uh, coils or the energy that actually went into heating the water and the cup, right? So the energy that went into heating the water is gonna be the mass of the water. So we have to subtract these two, 174 minus 42 and a half. So the mass of the water is going to be 131.5 grams. So we take 131.5 grams, 
right? And then we're gonna say the specific heat of water is one calorie per gram Celsius. The change in temperature, I'm gonna subtract the final temperature, 62.3 minus the initial temperature, which is 23.8. Then I add the mass of the cup, 42.5 grams, times the specific heat of the cup, 0.215 calories per gram Celsius, times the change in temperature of the cup, 62.3 minus 23.8, because the cup also warmed up, right? So, okay, then we're gonna do the conversion, right? One calorie is equal to 4.184 joules. Okay, so then we wanna multiply this by 4.184, one calorie is 4.184 joules, and then we're gonna get here 2.265 times 10 to the fourth joules, which is gonna be what? 22.65 kilojoules, right? So the coils gave off 21.5449 kilojoules, and then uh, how much did the water in the cup heat? 22.65 kilojoules, that's actually very close. So what probably happened uh, is, the room is also warmer than the water temperature. The room right now is about 75 to 80 Fahrenheit. So there is some heat going into the, the calorimeter from the room helping warm up the water. That's why this number is larger slightly than this number, right? So that's due to the heat given off by the room because the room is warmer than room temperature water, okay? So this pretty much makes sense. They're in the ballpark. We can take the percent the difference between the two, right? So I'm actually really, really uh, glad about the result. So percent difference. Since uh, neither one of these numbers is the more accurate one, it's just two quantities that we're comparing to each other, what I'm gonna do is just take 100% times, I'm gonna take the difference between the two, 22.65 minus 21.49, and then I'm gonna divide it by their average. So I add them, I go 21.49 plus 22.65 divided by two. So I subtract them and I divide by their average. That gives me the percent difference between the two results and that tells me uh, how good my result is. All right? Well, happy with that result. Okay, 5% difference. Even though my, uh, thermo my, even though my thermos is not a perfect calorimeter, it's not perfectly insulating, there's heat coming in from the surrounding. So we've actually proven a lot of things. Proved the equation uh, voltage times current times time. We showed that that's equal to mass times the specific heat times change in temperature. And we were able to explain why uh, this number is bigger because due to the heat coming in from the atmosphere, okay? Thank you very much.